Hey guys, welcome to the 16th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, uh, we're going to learn more about methods. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button, and once you have it on your form, just go ahead and double click on it. Alright, so in the previous tutorial, we learned how to create a method. So we would just type void, and then we would just give a name for our method. I'm just going to call it my method. And then we also learned about parameters and passing them through to our block of code. So we would just put empty parameters right there, or empty parentheses, if we didn't need the user to input any data. And then right inside of these two uh, curly braces is the code block. So whenever the user calls this method, all the code inside of here will be executed. So if we were to just go up here and type my method, then once we called this method right here, all of the code inside of these two uh, curly braces would be executed. All right, and then if we had the user pass through a parameter such as a string, I'll just call it name, then up here the user would have to pass through a string. So we just pass through Adam, and now what it would do right here is just set this string called name equal to Adam, and then we could use this variable inside of this code block right here. All right, so that's just a quick overview of the previous tutorial. And in the previous tutorial, um, I told you we were going to be learning about this in the next tutorial. So basically what this is right here is it's the return type. So this method right here currently um, doesn't hold the value of anything since its return type right here is void. And void just basically means that this method doesn't represent anything. So if we were to just call my method right here and we have to pass through a string right now. So if I just pass through Adam. Now, my method doesn't represent anything, so we can't set this equal to anything. Well, let's say we wanted this to represent a string. What we'd have to do right here is change this void to string. So now, basically what this does is my method represents a string. And now to tell it what string it's going to represent, we're just going to have to type return right here, and then the string that we want it to represent. And we're just going to have it represent the string that is passed through. So we're just going to say return name. So basically what's going to happen here is we just pass through name through this method. Then it sets this string called name equal to Adam. Then it just returns Adam since name is equal to Adam. And now that we returned this name right here, my method is equal to Adam. So now what we could do right here is just display um, in a message box uh, this method and we should just get Adam. And let's just make sure that this works here. And we can just put this inside of here because this represents a string as indicated by the return type. Alright, so let's just go ahead and make sure that this works. We should just get Adam. Yep, perfect. Alright, and we could just return something static. We don't have to make it be what the user passes through right here. So we could just say return hello. And then we would just get hello inside of a message box. Since what it does right here is it just calls this method, and this method, remember, represents a string, and then it just sets my method equal to hello, and then it just displays that inside of a message box. So we should just get hello. Yep, perfect. And usually methods are used for calculations, so the return type is usually int, but it doesn't have to be. So we could say um, int right here, and now this method uh, represents an integer. So now what we'd have to do right here is just return a number. So we just return 6. So now my method represents an integer. And since this represents an integer right here, we're just going to have to say dot to string to convert it into a string so that we can display it inside of a message box. So now inside of our message box, we should just get 6. Yep, perfect. And you can make the return type for a method anything that you want. So if we wanted to make it be a pool or an object, we could do that. So if we just made it a pool right here, and then we could just return true. So now, basically what it's doing is it's setting the return type for my method to be bool, and then we're just returning true. So my method represents true. So in a message box, we should just get true, because it converts my method, which is true, into a string, and we should just get um, true in a message box. Yep, perfect. Alright, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial on methods, so see you guys.